everyone. I start saying thanks to all the training team to give me the opportunity again to share my experience in this case, talking about infinity platform uh, for the axillary hyperhidrosis and bromidosis permanent solutions. I first say that I am a KOL of Neutronic and I received fee for this conference. If you try to look for this phrase at the internet, less hygienic famous, uh, you can find these old photos of um, rock star, uh, people from Hollywood, soccer players, uh, including people from royalty who pass with for this in-person moment. And why I say in-person moment? Because people in general associated sweat and armpit odor with poor hygienic and personal carelessness. Nothing is farther from reality. All people who suffer of these problems, uh, they uh, show in twice a day or maybe take shower twice a day and, and in some cases they uh, change clothing several times a day to avoid this in-person moment. In addition to people suffering from axillary hyperhidrosis and bromidosis, we must consider not only rock star as I show you or people from Hollywood, uh, or you need to um, consider people like us with high social occupational exposure. Hyperhidrosis is excessive sweating that occurs spontaneously without being caused by high temperature or by situation of physical or emotional stress and whose chronicity interferes with the usual work and social activity, activities. It means that you can obtain sweating without any cause. Uh, in summary, excessive sweating without any stimulation, stimulus or western or wisdom. Usually is symmetric and begins in childhood or adolescence is really frequently in pretense from uh, fr uh, sorry, 14 to 16 years old. Uh, every 1 to 3 percent of all world population suffer about this. Approximately, it means that 1.5 million of Argentines suffer of this, and these are actual potential patients and future potential patients. Appears from most frequently in Asians especially in Japanese, all 40 to 50 percent of cases are hereditary cause. It means that we can found a lot of members in each family with this problem. Uh, axillary hyperhidrosis is the most frequent in this area uh, with the 60 percent of the cases and 90 percent of the armpit sweats are from echina glands, not for apocrine glands that I tell you in a few minutes. Instead of bromidosis is the excessive separation of apocrine glands. This separation uh, is of different kinds of ceramides from the rest of the population. We can different kinds of ceramides each other of including the same uh, members of the of the family uh, when the, the sweat came into contact with the use of bacteria that we uh, we found in, in over the skin, uh, especially in the armpits. The decompositions produce ammonium and fatty acid, and these two substances generate a strong smell, a really particular smell. Not all the smell uh, came from the, the, the same uh, people in the area, it's different uh, from each one to each one. And we, we have genetic or acquired cause. Amount of the acquired cause uh, was. Uh, have organic causes like diabetes, thyroid pathology, and adrenal pathology. In some cases, pharmacological causes, or some cases with a great intake of food like garlic or onion, or great injection or great intake of alcoholic beverage. Our patients who suffer of this problem usually uh, create or get a special pattern of behaviors to avoid this embarrassing moment, like avoid contact, uh, avoid hugging, 
they limit the movement of the arm to uh, avoid the exposure the armpits and that's why they uh, have a rigid posture to hide uh, this sweating they change clothes several times uh, during the day they take more than one shower uh, over the day they use uh, lost clothing um, to avoid the contact of the cloth with the, the area and to avoid to show this uh, great sweating and they usually uh, wear jackets or sweater even in the middle of summer when we talk about the characteristic of the erythrina or aprocrina sweat glands we need to say that they have uh, a thermoregulation function and we have uh, close to 600 of sweat glands uh, per square centimeter majority of the eclina sweat glands are at the armpits, hands or feet but we have eclina glands in all over, uh, all over our skin in all our um, body areas and apocrine glands are only at the armpits, genital area, external auditoria canal, eyelids and areolas it's really important to mention that while the great majority of tangled apocrine glands are deeper in the surface of the skin um, because they need to uh, drain these ceramides first in a hair follicle uh, before to reach to the surface of the skin uh, the ductus of the um, eclina glands are uh, go directly to the surface of the skin and the um, eclina um, tangles are really shallow in compared with the apocrine glands uh, that means that we need to know that if we have a uh, hyperdrosis problem maybe we need to act really uh, shallow in the surface of the skin with our device but if we look for providosis uh, apocrine gland we need to go deeper in the surface of the skin we have an hyperdrosis disease severity scale we have four, four degrees of, of this problem in the grade one the sweat is never noticed nor it prevents habitual activities in grade two Sweating is tolerable, but sometimes it prevents habitual activities. Uh, in the last two grades, uh, is the majority of uh, the, uh, the reason why our patients look for an appointment. In the grade three, sweating is rarely tolerable and frequently prevents habitual activity. And the last grade, the grade four, sweating is not tolerable and interferes continuously in the habitual activity. When we talk about promidosis classification, where well, there's not, I never found uh, anyone. Uh, it's very, very personal and subjective. And uh, even the outcomes, the result of our treatment is subjective. The patient needs to tell us if the reduction about the smell is impossible to, to measure that. We need to set during the treatment to our patient that we have surgical and non surgical solutions. First, we talk about surgical procedures and the first one and the, the most common is endoscopic thoracic cephalectomy at the level T3, T4, it means that we cut the sympathetic nerve uh, at this level and that's why we can stop the nerve stimulations and we can stop the sweating at the armpits, at the hands and the, the, the feet. Um, we can offer two cutaneous excisions, subdermal curitage, liposuction, subdermal ultrasound, and subdermal laser. Uh, as I tell you, the most common is the endoscopic thoracic, thoracic sympathectomy when we talk about surgical procedures. But we have a lot of problems when we choose this treatment because 80% of treated patients develop compensatory sweating. And the most important is this. Uh, side effects or complications uh, don't have any kind of permanent solutions. Uh, here it is um, a text in, in Spanish 
that the patient sent to me in the past and I, I translate that and say to you that the patient asked me because uh, they asked me a solution because uh, the, the treatment at the RP was successful but by, by this sympathectomy but uh, it developed a compensatory sweating on the chest, on the back, including on the feet. And they look for a solution. I need to say that it's impossible to get a solution, permanent solution to these all grading areas. Um, when we talk about non surgical procedure, we start saying that we have a topical solution of 20% of aluminium. Uh, we can obtain results, but only a few hours, never more than a day. Uh, we have another solution, and um, in some cases, we need to stop with this. Uh, solution this treatment because they develop uh, allergic reaction, weight allergic reaction. We can offer high antiphoresis, uh, we can obtain coagulate skin protein creating a temporary blockage of sweat ducts, but uh, in this case it only um, takes a, a solution for a few days, never more than five, or a medication like Lycopyronium bromide and propantenic bromide offer us a solution, but the problem is we can reduce any kind of, um, sorry, any kind of secretion, not only uh, of sweating, at the same time oral secretion and uh, um, genital secretion. And it's a great problem for our patient, and we need to stop the treatment. We can offer offer bottling toxin is very popular nowadays but the result is only for a few months never more more than six to eight months and we can offer a permanent solution by transdermal radio frequency and intradermal radio frequency we want to talk about intradermal radio frequency this is the characteristic of typical treatment of microneedle radio frequency by infinite uh, well, our objective is to destruction, permanent reduction of eccrinal and proclinal sweat glands, but it's important without damaging papillary dermis and epidermis. We use bipolar uh, radio frequency through 49 gold and teflon microneedles. It's really important that because only the tip of the needle acts, the, the, the rest of the body of the needle uh, is a uh, is is covered with teflon, that's why it's uh, avoid transfer heat and avoid any side effect in the really um, superficial, superficial area of the skin. But we need to say that this is not selective activity. We never know that we can destroy um, the core of the sweat glands or uh, only dermis. Uh, that's why it's important if we can choose the diff of the uh, of the needle with the, the with the needle going to act between 0 0.5 to 3.5 millimeters. It's important to choose the time from 10 to 1,000 milliseconds, and uh, it's important to choose the intensity, the power from 2,005 to 50 watts. Uh, the goal is to increase the temperature in different layers to obtain thermal coagulation in these all different layers. That's why we can obtain a permanent reduction of any kind of sweat gland we, we can reach with this heat. When we compare by this drawing the difference between the, uh, the radio frequency devices, uh, we need to say that the monopolar can act really deep in the layer of the skin, but with a really few of, of quantity of, of power of this wave, wave frequency and of this heat. When we talk about bipolar devices, act always in the, in the surface of the skin. And when we choose these micro needles um, of this wave frequency device, we can able to choose and act in the deep layers of the skin uh, without damaging the interface area, as I show you here in this um, histological uh, view, with this in, in which one we can obtain this coagulation zone, 
but without transfer heat and without damaging the, the interface area. This is the classical treatment and this is the way we can obtain several dots of uh, thermal coagulation and we can choose like in this case the deep part of the surface or sorry the deep part of the layer of the skin we, we pass several times uh, usually three pass in different deep of layer of the skin and different powers this is the first paper I read in 2014, but the paper is from 2013. Uh, it's from, from the author was Kim, and they show us a pilot study uh, with successful in the production of the sweat uh, glands, the permanent production of sweat glands in a few patients. I used this article and my, uh, to write this own article and publish it in the European Journal of Plastic Surgery, AGPS, in 2019, last year. Uh, I show my experience from July 2014 to July 2016, over 74 armpits in 70, uh, in, uh, sorry, in uh, 37 patients, uh, with a total of six months of average of post treatment control, we can obtain a 50% of reduction of the sweat in 80% of my patients. We have contraindications like pregnancy, breastfeeding, it's total contraindication of presence of peacemaker, and cutaneous infection. And we have relative ones like botulinum toxin at the armpits in the last six months because we never know that the treatment was successful or was successful by botulinum toxin and uh, the color backgrounds to avoid any kind of bad scar. Why I choose infinite microneedle radio frequency for this treatment? Because I can make my own infinite recipe. It means that not all the skin are the same. We have diff difference between the thickness, we have difference between the mastering, and we have different between, be, uh, between uh, different fermentations. Uh, and we need to uh, have the opportunity to choose uh, different parameters uh, about that. And we have hyperidosis with or without bromidosis, at the same time we have bromidosis with or without hyperidosis. Uh, that's why it's really important to have the opportunity to choose the depth, the duration, and the intensity of uh, the treatment. And our platform, our infinite platform, give us this opportunity. This is a classical sequence of any kind of sessions of permanent sweat production. I first is apply yodo, uh, povidan iodine uh, over the skin of the armpits. Then I apply the talcum powder to allow us to uh, show uh, the, the pores with the ductus of the sweat glands and if I take the, the excessive powder, you can see here this drawing. Then I mark the area to be sure that, uh, to treat the, 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 the area with the problem and not the west of the armpits. The treatment is really painful if I don't do that. I always use local anesthesia of 22% of lidocaine by intradermal injection. Uh, believe me that it's impossible to um, uh, perform the treatment without this kind of, of, of anesthesia. I always open the displaced, disposable tip uh, in front of my patient to allow uh, them the possibility to be sure that uh, it's only for them, I, I, and I start the treatment with a new disposable, I never use uh, uh, um, an old one. This is the way I, con I, I make a test, a control of the system, and in some cases I show this to my patient. And I start the treatment. 
I um, go step by step, deep by deep. I start first uh, in the at the depth of two to three millimeters. And in the first pass, in the second pass, I prefer to choose uh, intermedial uh, deep, like two millimeters. And in the last pass, I always try to choose between 1.5 to 2 millimeters. And when at the end of the treatment, this is the classical wetness or uh, swelling and ecchymosis. I, I live over the area and it takes um, close to five days to disappear. I choose a patient and ask her to allow me to make a biopsy of the skin and send to the uh, anatopathology. Um, uh, they give us this uh, answer of uh, a treated area. This is a classical apocrine gland. And in this case, if you can see here these cells, we can uh, uh, obtain an absence of nuclei in some of them and an hydropic degener degeneration of the cytoplasm. It means that this area was treated and this area um, is uh, going to disappear the secretion of apocrine glands forever. In my experience, at beginning in July 2014, I treated 302 armpits over 151 patients uh, up to January 2020, uh, was over 93 females and 58 males between 50 to 60 years old with an average of 31, 31 years old and more than 90% of them uh, have a HDSS uh, of 3 and 4. It means that the um, amount of uh, sweat secretion are really important. My result, most patients, more than 80% of the cases, who attend post-treatment control obtain a subjective improvement. It means a decrease of the HF SS uh, from 4 to 3 to 3 to 2 and an objective improvement. It means a decrease in the drawing of the minor test. Uh, in eight cases of bromidosis, uh, uh, we obtain a significant reduction of the authorization, but always uh, remember that it's a subjective test. The patient said us that the smell are decreased, is decreased, sorry but uh, it's impossible to measure for us in, in an objective test or in an objective way. And when I start my, my experience, especially in 2014 and 2015, uh, I have some cases of a C percent of scar or transitory or permanent TIH. Like for me, uh, uh, fortunately for me at this moment, uh, these uh, problems uh, are disappear or are really few. My results, my objective results only can obtain by the reduction of the drawing of the minor test, like this case, like this another case, like this one, and in the, this last one. My complication and side effects, like I said to you, the, the transitory um, side effects are edema, swelling, pain, and paresthesias, uh, and the complication in some cases was permanent, like scars, isolated scar, and transitory or permanent PIH. My present parameters, I always pass three times, in some cases four, but the weight uh, are three to four, and the average of three. The depths I choose are between three 0.5 to 2.0 uh, usually are them in some cases uh, in uh, um, thinner skin I can choose 1.5 but uh, in the, the few cases my uh, energy level selection are between 12 and 16 in it means that I choose 30 to 40 watts uh, in, in every uh, pass uh, in every pulse, and the pulse duration uh, that I choose uh, are between four to six 
100 milliseconds. In conclusions, it's another treatment that we can uh, choose and uh, offer to our patients uh, with the Infinite platform. It will be effective and novel non-surgical treatment of axillary hyperhidrosis. It will be effective and innovate non-surgical treatment of bravidosis because we have obtained always a quantity of destruction of sweat glands that it means we always obtain a permanent decrease of some degree of sweating and odor. Uh, it's, it's not a, a, um, we can we can obtain uh, a, a hundred percent of reduction of the sweating in, in all in, in all our patients, but always obtain a decrease of the the, the sweating and the odor. And without complete lesion of the epidermis and papillary dermis, be sure that we can obtain a total restitution of the skin in the past majority of the treatments. And my ideal weight at this moment is three sessions that I tell to you. Thank you for your attention and if you have any doubt or any question, please uh, don't doubt to uh, write to me to this email and I'm glad to uh, give you the answers of the treatment or the parameter. Thank you so much again.